the presentation that I want to share today is on the topic optimizing integration of geoscience data to improve mapping of mineral discoveries as a case study for Bozona Geoscience. Bozona Geoscience Institute is basically a replacement of geological survey in Bozona, but let me just take you through the outline. For the outline, I'll go through the introduction and then discuss on the BGI purpose and mandate. And then the BGI mineral based projects, our integration of systems, how we manage it to enhance our data interpretation, how we protect data and how we manage it, and also the opportunities that are available for BGI in terms of implementing geoscience projects and then the conclusion. In terms of introduction for Botswana, I just wanted to share more light in terms of where exactly is Botswana globally. Botswana is, when this, is within the SADC region, which is the southern African southern uh, African side, southern side of Africa. And Botswana took independence in 1966. So since 2014, we took basically the role of the former geological survey, which was a, a department in Botswana. Now we are basically called Botswana Geoscience Institute, BGI. In relation to what BGS mandate is, we are actually having the mandate and our purpose focusing on providing geoscience information in order to position Botswana as an attractive investment destination in the mineral sector. Our target, our scope, our interest is to make sure we reach a vision of being a renowned geoscience center. In relation to its mandate, we advocate to make sure that we advance the geoscientific knowledge through research, which is applied research, we also position Botswana in mineral investment attractiveness so that globally Botswana is well known to have the minerals resources. We also provide advice to the government, which is Botswana government, the community at large, and we also uh, advance the uh, knowledge and understanding of geoscience information to the public. In terms of our mineral-based project, I'll just basically name a few, but we are not having them as a limitation. We have massive, but I'll just concur on a few. <clears throat> we have projects that are addressing assessment of mineral deposits, such as calcrete, limestones, and also we focus on rare earth and industrial minerals. We have projects addressing coal resources, ultramafic and granitic plant complexes, and shale deposits. <clears throat> Some projects basically are on the issue of environmental monitoring, monitoring, which wherever we are involved in uh, monitoring the hydrology, including also the groundwater pollution. We also have the geohazards, wherever we do seismic, mo seismic monitoring, and we have the geotech assessment. Geotech basically is whereby we assess if there is a fault or a dike or some buildings where they are basically put for uh, residential areas, they are tend to be cracking, or whether there's been a, a potential chances that an it Quake could have affected through that area if it occurred at, at a certain magnitude. <clears throat> In terms of the examples, these are just the pictures that shows you the wide range of examples of projects we do. When we talk about your hazard, for example, we had we have scenarios whereby the land could be having some uh, fractures. We can have probably for uh, environmental one where we are assessing the vegetation, how it could be affecting the being affected by the environment, or maybe how the earthquake could have affected it, or any slight sink or land sinking. And also the geological exploration, we are involved in the elements of exploration where we are basically trying to drill and find the prospects of where our bodies are. And these are projects <clears throat> that we basically collaborate with our exploration companies in Botswana. We also have incidences whereby hydrology could have led to rains to be of a certain magnitude and there will be some hazards that we have to monitor how groundwater is behaving. And our main goal really is to make sure that our data is accessible because the entire nation at large, even globally, they need to have access to the information. Therefore, that is why I wanted to take us through the integration of our systems, such that when we do data interpretation, we have the information available. We can be able to make sure that even what we have discovered is our findings, we can be able to share the information. So the availability of geoscience information and how the systems are functioning is very critical in our organization as an enabler. And we have techniques which are numerous within BGI, covering like, for example, S3 products, and we have the interpretation of satellite images and Era photographs and geophysics, which is the norm for geology in terms of how we do our field mapping. And of course, remote sensing is also an enhancer as well in terms of enabler to assist us to do mineral assessment, whereby you can be able to depict more of the features within a particular area, whether it's 3D 
or maybe assessing the chances of having a particular uh, rock rocks that are susceptible to be uh, prone to be leading to maybe founding a kimberlite pipe in that area or not. And therefore, all these uh, samples that we collect in different field mapping, we make sure we take them through the laboratories to enhance our data analysis, our interpretation in mineral findings. <clears throat> so I just wanted to show the picture of why there is a need for, and it's very important that integrations of systems is very critical to enable data interpretation. This is basically saying in the the process, process of having to be a pre-quantitative provider of information for investment, you are first to go field mapping, you acquire the data, you use the tools and the techniques to make sure you manage it, you store it in such a way that it could be informative, you have value added to the information, and therefore you can release it, you can provide it online, we disseminate it as we also make it our, uh, our core business, and therefore be in a position to advise the country in terms of how our mineral uh, is, is actually a trend, the trend is taking with Within the country as such. Therefore, in terms of sharing that insight, I wanted just to insight, insist that or put across that in our current strategy, we are advocating for making sure we avail our geoscience data online. And this information that we are availing online, we currently have a URL at library.bgi.org, which is currently accessible online. It actually uh, captures or has information covering prospect license reports, bulletins, internal geological reports, and you can easily access and download. And this information, we are uh, every day or in a daily basis uploading the information. We have other systems that are currently at development stage which will be also web enabled and this one probably relates to one project where we call it National Integrated Geoscience Information System and we have another one for Geoscience Portal. So the NIGES one is very important because the main funder here is government and the, the scope of the project is huge. It actually covers most of all the projects that we are doing including the inception of a project, all the information that is captured during the drilling all the information that is captured during field mapping, all the information that is captured during data analysis or laboratory results and the findings and the reports that we basically upload, uh, put across for even at the level of publishing them. So that system basically we have them, the modules developed in that system to make sure that we have our users here within BGI uploading the information. I'll share more in the next slides in terms of what the system encompasses. So the geoscience portal basically is more of like an inbuilt system on the normal software Geosoft we use as geologists for making sure we interpret and we analyze geoscience data. And then in terms of the library slide, I just wanted to show you that when you go online in terms of library.bgi.org, BW, this is the type of information that you'll be having uh, at your front hand in terms of your desk. This will be able to give you access to say you can have access to the maps, the books, the, the journals, the publications we currently have in our library, the bulletins, and you can actually even search the title of that bulletin or that prospecting license report or the prospecting report and you can even search for the type of company that was working on that particular report whether it was a prospecting company looking for an ore of a diamond a gold you can basically check and be able to access the report and download it this is where we currently say the information is on uh, is accessible online as we speak and the system for Niger, I just wanted to give you a sharing of where we are and what we are planning to be in the next coming months. We have this project basically running and development currently ongoing. It started in September 2018. The SAWA, which is a statement of user requirements, it already is completed with the system design. And the system, the target basically of this project is to disseminate your science information. We are anticipating to have the project completing around early 2022 and the development of the modules is ongoing and they are done in such a way that they are scalable and independent such that if you have one module complete you can have it ready for data uploading and the system therefore is agile and uh, the modules are also uh, scaled up to be availed in terms of for readiness for data uploading every six months i give an example we have the applied geoscience module which is currently complete and the users are already uploading the information and then the surveys module the same which is at 95 percent other modules which will probably of interest to share is the collection 
Solutions one, which handles the call shared data. And then we have the mining cadaster. This one is very critical for us in the country because it's also going to be utilized by the Department of Mines, which is basically a regulator in providing the prospective license and the mining license. So if a prospecting company is advocated to apply for prospective license or a mining license, they will be able to do it online without having to go in person physically, which means you can be able to access the system even if you're outside the country, you are outside Botswana. So this is why I indicated at first to say this is a huge project and the shareholder has much interest on it towards its completion. I will just say you in terms of what we are targeting, in terms of what we integrate in different sets or different types of data sets. So whether it's to data that has to be with radar or geophysics or geochemistry that is cadaster based vector or images as well, this basically system will have the potential and the capability of being able to access this information and avail it regardless of the format that is being developed with. And then this is just how probably the appearance of the NIGES module looks. It's just an example I'll just create as a sh for sharing. If, for example, you are having some boreholes which were drilled by prospecting companies, they will be able to have access to the information captured within this system. And when we upload it for our users, for our customers, they should be able to know when it was drilled, which company was responsible, which, which prospecting license area was it uh, uh, drilled along. And in terms of any geology that relates to that area will also be available. So basically, we will also provide those that data link through the portal in terms of what we do we have captured within our Niger's. And this is still more sharing in relation to the Niger's because we have done it in such a way that you can link many databases. Whatever database is, is whichever is created doesn't affect where the other one is not working. They will still be able to have a standalone, but they will be basically independent. It makes it easier such that the system can be easy to maintain and can be sustainable without a system having to fail at one time. So that is the approach of use, which is agile, like I said before. And then it allows a lot of data sets or layers to be integrated through regardless of whether it's your physics, geological data or GIS based or even your chemistry data. So that is basically our approach in relation to make sure we advocate and we really fast track the element of information sharing relating to your science. And now when I come back to the data protection, data management, it's very critical for BGI because it addresses the elements of intellectual property. There will be 10 projects we do with collaborators or maybe other stakeholders. Then in terms of intellectual property, it's very important to have a policy. We do have an intellectual property policy within BGI that basically puts guidelines and regulations and rules in terms of how we advocate to say the data is owned by BGI, how we call share the data after or during the project implementation. We do it through our uh, documents which we sign off, which is called project specific agreements. And all this information is basically captured by this policy. We also have a data management policy. The data management policy provides guidelines on how our geologists acquire field uh, data during field mapping and also addresses decisions that address the rationale that comes out on data issues and also addresses the, how we capture, store and disseminate the information at, at large so that we can be assured there is quality aspect taken care of. We are also assured that our data is also protected. So those are the policies we do have currently in existence within BGI. And we have the national, we are also a participator within the forum which is created locally in Botswana called National Special Data Infrastructure. This is a project that actually encompasses many stakeholders and we are also part of that. That basically addresses the standardization of data standards in terms of whether it's data codes to, towards mapping standards, we do implement them such that even when we sell data or we provide the data for Botswana, all the other stakeholders who are all in the same page of understanding. And then I'll come to the opportunities that ties us in terms of which enable us, law like they enable us, or basically we leverage on to make sure that we succeed when we are implementing our geoscience projects in relation to mineral findings or mineral <clears throat> discoveries. So some of this project, basically, we have them conducted through collaborations. We do have collaborations we do locally and internally, and we currently have some of the uh, memorandum of understanding which we have signed. I'll just call it a few internationally and locally. Internationally, we have signed an MOU with the Czech Republic Geological Survey and the Finland Geological Survey. And we do, of course, 
intend to have more of these signed in turn globally. And these are just a few examples I've just mentioned. Internally, we have signed some uh, this MOU with like uh, Bozona Institute of Research Innovation. We have the Investor of Bozona also signed. And also we have another one we have signed with BUST, which is International Investor of Science Technology. This is a platform we normally work on to make sure that when we initiate a project and when we sign a project specific agreement, it can help us to do cost sharing in terms of resources and making sure that we are able to have the same platform where the country can advocate to make sure that a project when it starts, it is able to be sustained at the end. The shareholder is able to fund it towards the end of the project or even a participator who is a stakeholder within the project, they can be able to make sure that it is conducted accordingly. And in, in terms of other opportunities we have, Bozana currently is the main shareholder, so he's the one who's funding DGI all the way. And we also have a project sustainable plan in terms of how we establish ecosystem such that our project has a start and the end. We actually present it in our meetings and also even up to the level where we, we have to share our project progress. And there is therefore this continuity also we do in relation to when we have done our findings in terms of where our uh, discoveries are for minerals, we publish papers in BGI. And we also have the collaborations assisting us that there is continuity of building capacity and making sure that project management is taken care of. This therefore allows synergy of projects, whereby a project will not be starting and ending nowhere. You can have at the end of the day that the project will be a taken care of and it will end as expected. So these are some of the elements that we say we are using and we are seeing it as a leverage to allow continuity as an opportunity for BGI. And with those few words, I just want to come to the conclusion of my presentation. So in concluding the presentation, I just wanted to say that BGI target and aims to increase geoscience data on mineral deposits within the country. There is more we are looking forward to see being done in Botswana, and we are also advocating to see uh, expectations of more findings in terms of all deposits that are laid here, whether it's coal, such that we can even find other resources apart from the, the key ones which are adding uh, increase incrementally for our GDP like diamonds. So we are believing that in the next coming years, Botswana should be able to have a, a, a high level of a global a, a investment attractive index as far as the Fraser Index is because we compete to make sure we have value information such that our geoscience information will not be difficult to access. Therefore, with those few words, I want to say Bija attains to place Botswana at a competitive level as far as mineral farms are concerned. And we do would be interested to have more stakeholders involved in working with us in the future all over the world. So I think at that stage or at this time, I just want to say thank you as I've come to the conclusion of my presentation. Thank you.